Wait, hold on a second, what about me? Hi guys, my name is Valerie and I'm a real Prague guide, but today we're not in Prague, we are in Krzywoklad. Krzywoklad Castle is one of the most famous castles in the Czech Republic. It was founded in 13th century, probably during the reign of Wenceslas I, but it is most famous for being a prison for a dangerous alchemist, Edward Kelly. The origin of the name Krzywoklad or Crooked Castle is unknown, but there are two versions. It was either called like that because of the crooked trees that used to surround the castle, or because of its uneven foundations. Crooked. In its more than 800 years of existence, Krzywoklad has had many visitors, but perhaps the most famous resident of all of them is of course our great king, Charles IV, or back then he was a little boy called Wenceslas. His mother, Eliška, moved here to Krzywoklad after a big fire in the Prague castle. But unfortunately, they did not have a happy ending here, because the father of Charles IV, John of Luxembourg, was manipulated into thinking that Eliška is plotting against him. So he decided to imprison her and their children here. So in a way, Krzywoklad was a prison for Charles IV, where he spent most of his early childhood. But I guess it wasn't so bad, because later Charles IV came back here with his first wife and that's where she gave birth to their first child, daughter Marqueta. Charles IV was apparently very happy because he ordered people who lived nearby Krzywoklad to bring the nightingales, the birds, from the forest and put them under her window so they would entertain her with their singing. I'm not sure if it's romantic or sadistic. Bloody birds, make it stop! During Hussite Wars, Krivoklat burned down. Luckily, there was a king in 15th century who decided to rebuild it. His name was King Vladislav of Jagilo, and that's why you can see two W letters above the main entrance here. Vladislav did not speak Czech, so he would say Bene, okay, to everything that people would ask him. That's why he was nicknamed King OK, King Bene. Your Majesty, can I have a new house? Bene. Your Majesty, can I have two wives? Ben, your majesty, are you an idiot? There was a story though connected to Krivoklad that I think Vladislav wished he could forget. During his reign, 10 miners from Kutna Hora were sentenced to death for rebelling against him. Three of them were supposed to be executed here and two were, but the third one managed to escape by basically hitting the handman with a rock. Later, Vladislav found out that they were not guilty. It was actually the bureaucrats from Kutna Hora that were stealing silver from him. He of course punished them, but he could not reverse back the time to save the miners. Okay guys, let's finally enter the castle. All right, here we are. Krivoklad Castle has a lot to offer to its visitors. You can go on a guided tour of the interiors or do the self-tour of defense walls. You can also take part in a game or mint a coin. Když je tady zaražená, aby mm -hmm. vypadla ven, tak musíte ťuknout ještě do toho kolíčku malou ránu. Tady je. A je tam i letopočet, kdy jste tady byli. All these exercises made me hungry. Luckily, there is a restaurant here. We went for a typical kofola, just like Coca-Cola, but better. And the duck. Our lunch arrived. We went for a typical dish duck. 
with some potato dumplings and cabbage. I'm salivating right now because I'm so hungry. Looks good, so let's try it. You have to forgive us that we don't describe the food for you properly as you complained in the comments because we are not food vloggers and this is not a mukbang by the way how to get to krivoklad first you need to download the app called idos and put the first and last station and you will see that you need to change in Beroun. normally it's pretty easy pay attention to exclamation marks because sometimes there are changes and you need to click the exclamation mark to see them. For example, when we went there, there was a bus that took the passengers instead of a train for a couple of stops. That is the train station. When Habsburgs came into power, Krivoklad became their state prison. And one of the most famous prisoners here was the member of Unity of Brethren, one of the oldest Protestant denominations in the world. His name was Jan Augusta, and he was imprisoned here for 16 years. 16 years! And his friend, Jakub Bilek, decided not to abandon him and was imprisoned here as well for 13 years. I know. And the guards here did not even talk to them because they were considered to be too dangerous. But there was one lady here that was empathetic to their lot. Her name was Philippine Welser and she was a morganatic wife of Ferdinand II. Morganatic is a fancy word for baby mama. Basically, she was a noble, so she couldn't marry Ferdinand II, but she lived here and that's where she gave birth to their children, which she had to pretend every time that she gave birth that the child is not her and leave the child just outside of the gates to the castle. Oh, look at this beautiful baby that looks exactly like me. I need to take care of you. But my lady... It's okay, it's okay, little baby. We'll bring you home. Anyway, Filipina was a woman of the kind heart and after eight years of imprisonment, Jan and Jakub could celebrate Easter together. Just once, I know, very generous. But perhaps the most famous prisoner of this castle was Edward Kelly, alchemist, self-proclaimed medium and a man of extraordinary business skills. He came from England and his original name was Edward Talbot. But let's go back to Prague to tell his story properly. Edward Kelly arrived to Czech lands together with his friend, John Dee, also an alchemist and a spy to Queen Elizabeth I. They first worked for a man called William of Rosenberg and conducted the spiritual sciences with crystal ball and a lot of speaking to angels and spirits. In English, of course, so William did not understand it much. Later, they found another person who was long fascinated with esoterics, and that was, of course, Emperor Rudolf II. Edward Kelly then moved right below the Prague castle to be close to Rudolf and had his alchemistic laboratory, we think, here in this house, called the House of the Donkey at the cradle. The tower in the courtyard of this house was used as a laboratory by Edward Kelly. Kelly's position at court was not stable, so he decided to make a power move and secure his spot. He brought half a kilo of gold to Rudolf and told him that that's the result of his alchemistic experiment. Well, Rudolf believed him and did not ask any details. Later, Kelly was appointed to be the main alchemist at his court and raised to the title of the Knight of Iman. He also received some poor land outside of Prague that did not look very promising. But because he was a very talented businessman, he tripled his income from the land and even bought a house here on the Charles Square that nowadays we call Faust's house. Well, life was good up until the clock struck the hour of judgment. One day, Kelly's laboratory was attended by a certain Jan Hunkler, a bureaucrat and an informer. When Kelly was picking up something from the ground, a straight of hair uncovered his ears and Hunkler noticed something pretty strange. Kelly was missing both of his earlobes. Back then, cutting off earlobes was a common punishment for charlatans in England. And back then, he made a mistake of forging some documents when he was young and was punished that way. And that's why Edward Kelly always made sure to wear his hair really long and never cut it off. 
Well, Hunkler noticed that perhaps Rudolf II would not be so happy to find this out about his main alchemist. And Kelly fended off by saying that the duel should solve this. Back then, duels were illegal, but Hunkler decided to go with it anyway, and he lost and was killed. Now Kelly was doomed completely because he just killed the state bureaucrat in an illegal duel. Oops, I guess we should go back to Krivoklat. Ah, well, we are back to Krivoklat, to prison of poor Edward Kelly. He was imprisoned here in the tower called Ruderka for the first time. Yeah, you heard me correct. He was imprisoned actually many times during his life. And uh, here in that tower, he decided to escape after some time. His servant brought him a rope that he tied to the bars of his prison cell and decided to climb down. Well, the rope treacherously tore apart and poor Edward Kelly fell onto the sharp cliff below. After he regained his consciousness, he realized that his business is very bad because he had a massive wound in one of his legs and later the leg had to be amputated while he was fully aware of what was going on. Ouch. Anyway, he got himself a wooden leg and was pardoned by the king. But after some time, got himself into another trouble. That time he was in debt and was imprisoned again in a city called Moss, where he tried to escape and again fell and injured his healthy leg. Well, poor Edward Kelly couldn't take it anymore and he made himself a poison and poisoned himself in his prison cell. He was sort of a chemist after all. Mm, that's sad. Yeah, I know, but some people actually say that he never died, uh, that he staged and faked his own death and lived for 100 more years afterwards. So maybe he did invent the Philosopher's Stone in the end and could live for a very long time. But for now, let's go to somewhere more cheerful, a beautiful view of Krivoklad Castle. There are multiple views of Krivoklad Castle. We recommend this one, which is right next to the castle. Okay guys, so here we have the first beautiful viewpoint of Krivoklad, where you have three benches where you can enjoy the view. But this one is the best, right? It's gorgeous. And the second one, which is a bit further away, but it's worth it. Ah, well, thank you guys for watching. We hope you liked our today's video. By the way, thank you for 10,000 subscribers and we'll see you next week. Bye! Of Charles IV. <laughs> against him, so he decided to imprison her and their children here. <laughs> Wenceslas, and he was a little. <laughs> <laughs>